What's up, guys? Quantrix with two here with another edition of What's New. Uh, WWE Monday Night Raw was last night, and it was a pretty good show. I mean, um, it was all about <clears throat> WWE, the hijacking of Monday Night Raw. Because the Chicago, sh the Chicago crowd was supposed to hijack Monday Night Raw, and WWE prepared for that uh, in perfect in perfect form. Really, uh, they were very prepared for this this whole hijacking thing, and ba basically, I think it really backfired on the Chicago crowd. They went on this Twitter thing, making this this Twitter account saying that they were going to hijack Raw, and it really didn't seem like they hijacked it. I mean, they were seeing punk chants because of Chicago, but other than that, there wasn't really that much of hijacking. There wasn't they weren't booing every single uh, segment. I think WWE put on a pretty good damn show uh, on Monday on Monday night. Um, but it all kicked off with the uh, perfect in the perfect way, the most perfect way. I, I wanted them to do this, but I didn't expect it to be the guy, this guy to be the guy to do it. So they played the CM Punk music, uh, cult of personality for a good, um, you know, a minute or so, and then Hawk comes out walking. Here comes uh, the Walrus, um, Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman comes out there and uh, basically talks about. How uh, CM Punk, uh, it is somebody's fault that CM Punk's not here, and um, it, is, it is all the fans' fault that CM Punk is no longer in the WWE anymore. And just like that, the heat from the WWE went all on Paul Heyman, and the, the crowds were eating that up. Then somehow he transitioned that into the old Brock Lesnar Undertaker feud, which is pretty cool. Um, he said that it was also Undertaker's fault that you know CM Punk. You know, became what he became at the end of his uh, last run, um, <clears throat> and it's he's, he's going to get revenge through Brock Lesnar at uh, WrestleMania. Brock Lesnar came out, cut a promo, saying that he's better than Punk, better than uh, you know Triple H and Shawn Michaels, so they couldn't get the job done against uh, <clears throat> against the Undertaker, and he's going to get it done come uh, WrestleMania 30. After that, we had a uh, WWE Tag Team Championship match, the Usos versus the New Age Outlaws. Match was decent. The crowd made it uh, way more uh, more awesome than it was. And uh, the big thing coming out of this is that the Usos finally, after four years, became the WWE Tag Team Champion uh, Champions. And it was a huge moment for those guys. I'm very happy. They're probably the be they are they are the best tag team in the WWE right now, and they are well deserved of those titles. And to take it off a legitimate tag team, a prestigious tag team like the New Age Outlaws makes it uh, that much better. I see a lot of people on Twitter and stuff complaining about how the Usos uh, won the championships on Raw and not at WrestleMania. I say take it how you can get it. Um, I mean, who who would say that the, the Usos would even be at WrestleMania, you know, if it weren't for this? So I'm, had the, 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 I'm glad they won the titles and they can go into WrestleMania 30 as the champion and possibly defend those titles against somebody. Um... Right after that, WWE was on fire this first hour. Cause so right after that, we had the uh, the most look for the the, the most um, what, what what kind of work can I use? It's the match everybody was looking forward to when they announced it on on SmackDown. The uh, rematch between the Wyatts and the Shield, uh, great matchup, uh, just as good as their uh, Elimination Chamber matchup. But the thing going out to this match was the fact that uh, Seth Rollins walked out on Dean Ambrose. And uh, Roman Reigns, like who would have thought the glue that kept the Shield together, trying to keep them as a uh, bona fide threat in the WWE, he walked out on them because he, he just couldn't take it anymore, and it, it ended up being Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose having to fin the Shield off on them by themselves, and they just could not get the job done. And the uh, Wyatts went again. Um, <clears throat> after that, there was a. Uh, Oh yeah, I forgot Brock Lesnar beat up Mark Henry too. That happened. I don't know why Mark keeps going out there getting his ass whooped by Brock Lesnar, but it happened again. He had an F5 through the table. I forgot about that. That happened. Um, then uh, things started to kind of cool down after that on Raw. Uh, we had um, Emma there, and the crowd wasn't really getting behind Emma uh, this week. Um, uh, we had, um, what else was there? Oh, Ziggler and uh, Aaron, uh, what's his face from Breaking Bad, was out there. And uh, you know, think WWE was so smart to bring that guy out there with us uh, with uh, Dolph Ziggler because they knew that he was going to get a positive reaction either way because he's with Ziggler. Uh, Ziggler got the victory over uh, Del Rio, and yeah, that happened. Um, after that, there was what was after that? Um, hmm. 
I'm trying to think. I should have wrote this down. Um, I think we could just fast forward to the uh, whole Daniel Bryan coming out there and also challenging Triple H uh, once again. Triple H uh, and Stephanie just buried, not only just buried Daniel Bryan, but buried the crowd as well, saying that, uh, you know, Triple H said he's a B-plus player. Uh, he's not going to fight at WrestleMania because there's, there's no reason to do that. Um, he just needs to accept his spot in the company and just be happy with it. Um, <clears throat> and the crowd needs to just find a way to get the, you know, to stop this whole guest movement because it's not going to go anywhere. And then, um, basically, Triple H said he owns everything in his ring, including the fans and Daniel Bryan. And he said that he needs to get the hell out of his ring. Uh, Daniel didn't get out of there. He said to make him. Uh, Kane came out there. He attacked Kane and the crowd. Uh, Stephanie uh, demanded that security escort uh, Daniel Bryan out of the arena, even though he had a match later on that night against Batista. Weird, but uh, anyway, that happened. Um, and John Cena going out there, cut a promo, uh, talking about how he loved the crowd and stuff. But the best part of the, about this promo was the fact that John Cena said that uh, you know he knows that he's the that he's the big dog, and I like that that John Cena is actually saying that uh, you know. This company is him, and it is. And he said that uh, if anybody wants to, you know, try to get to the top, you got to go through John Cena, and um, <clears throat> which makes sense. And then after that, uh, the Wyatt appear, appeared on the screen, uh, cut a promo on Cena, saying that uh, you know he's there, that he's a the lone wolf on top of a mountain. And then what's going to happen when uh, that wolf goes down? When I take that wolf behind the shed and and put out his misery. Pretty cool promo by Way uh, by Bray Wyatt and the uh, family. I'm looking forward to that matchup. The feud looks like it's going to be hot. Um, after that, I think it was the Antonio Cesaro versus um, well, I don't know, somewhere in the somewhere in the night it was Antonio Cesaro versus uh, Biggie Langston. Uh, Jack Swagger got involved again, and then later on, Biggie Langston fought another match against Jack Swagger, and then immediately after the match started, he hit the neutralizer. They got in their face. He was going for the big swing. Uh, then Zeb Coulter told him to put him down. Uh, this is not what you do to your brother. They did their whole We the People thing. So I guess the real Americans will be uh, breaking up real soon. Real, 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 real soon. Um, it was a Bellis match. Um, and then we got to the main event. I believe the main event was next. Um, it was Dan Bryan versus Batista. Uh, obviously the match wasn't that great. No one how Batista works nowadays. It just it wasn't that great. But uh, for what it was, it was all right. Um, after that, uh, towards the end, the, uh, the, um, authority came out, and this is where everybody thought that CM Punk was going to finally return to help, uh, Dan Bryan, because Dan Bryan had to f basically fend off, uh, Kane, as well as, um, uh, Randy Orton, who was already out there as well. Kane, Randy Orton, and Triple H on his own. People thought CM Punk, CM Punk chance were allowed. They thought they were going to come out there, but it just did not happen. And I like how the how WWE swerved the crowd like that, thinking that CM Punk was going to come to help Daniel Bryan, but he didn't. Uh, basically, hit him on uh, when Daniel Bryan was on the ground. Triple H said he's tired of his crap. He got, then he uh, Daniel Bryan kicked him in the head. Triple H got pissed off. Uh, Batista hit the Batista bomb, and then uh, Triple H hit the uh, Pedigree, and that was it. So the fact that Daniel Bryan was all in this thing with Batista makes me think that they are going to do something that Daniel Bryan possibly will be in that uh, championship match come um, WrestleMania 30. I can't see them doing heel for heel. It's just not going to work. That is not best for business. Uh, they're just going to get boo out of the building. Um, you got to have a face in there. There's no doubt about it. And I don't know if it's going to be Daniel Bryan or CM Punk or whoever, but it has to be some kind of face in that matchup. And right now, I'm looking like it's looking like they're getting behind uh, Daniel Bryan. So uh, that's good. Pretty solid Raw. I uh, loved it. Main event live tonight on the WWE Network. Check.